hi dear students so today let us continue the chapter heredity and evolution today in this video or today in this class in this class let us know how the traits get expressed or how the character will get expressed so already we have studied that if both the t both or capital t the plant grows as a tall plant if one is capital t another one is small t the plant grows as a dwarf plant and if both the alleles or if both the chromosomes are small t then sorry sorry one capital t one small t and small t means again the plant will grows as a tall plant if both are small t then the plant grows as a dwarf plant that means if both are capital the if both the alleles are same if both the alleles are capital t then the plant grows as a tall plant if one is capital t another one is small t then the plant again grows as a tall plant if both the alleles are small t then the plant grows as a dwarf plant so that means here the tallness is the dominant and dwarfness is the recessive character so capital t is dominant and small t is recessive so now this one only we have to study here why if the capital t is present why the only the dominant character will be expressed and if if both are capital t dominant if one is capital t also dominant if both are small then it is recessive both are small t then it is recessive now let us know how the dominant character uh, it will be get expressed or let us know how the traits get get expressed for example let us take a plant having a set of chromosome so let us take a plant having a set of chromosome so that is this is capital t and small t so this is an allele that is responsible for the character called tallness so this is a plant having a set of chromosome these two are the set of chromosome and these two chromosomes are having different alleles one is capital t another one is small t what will be the character the plant grows as a tall plant the tall plant is grow the plant is growing as a tall plant because the gene responsible for tallness is dominant the gene responsible for tallness is dominant therefore the plant will grows as a uh, tall plant then who is responsible for tallness our question is who is responsible for the tallness now let us study that one so uh, we should recall the thing that we have studied in control and coordination in control and coordination we have studied the plant hormone so among plant hormone there are five plant hormones one is axin second one is cytokinins and third one is gibberellins so these are the three growth promoting hormones then ethylene and abscisic acid these two are called growth inhibiting hormone so among growth promoting hormone axis axin is responsible for the growth of the plant who is responsible for the growth of the plant so axin is responsible for the growth of the plant the what is the function of axin axin helps in elongation of cell if the cell is getting elongated that means the plant is growing as a tall plant or and the second one is axin helps in bending of stem towards sunlight that means axin is the hormone which is responsible for the tallness of a plant suppose if the axin is secreted more in plant then the plant grows as a tall plant if the axin is secreted very less in a plant then the plant grows as a dwarf plant that means on the on the secretion of a hormone called axin if axin is secreted in more the plant grows as a tall plant if the axin is secreted in less 
then the plant grows as a dwarf plant so then, then who will make this axim to secrete that we should know now so now among capital t and small t among capital t and small t so here this capital t is more active among capital t and small t we know that if capital t small t is there if these two alleles are there this this set of allele is responsible for a character called tallness among these capital t and small t if capital t is more active and this capital t since it is very active it gives the information for the production of enzyme this capital t will give the information for the production of enzyme so why we need enzyme we need enzyme for the production of axin we know that axin is the hormone responsible for the growth of the plant if axin is secreted in more the plant the plant grows as a tall plant if axin is secreted less the plant grows as a dwarf plant now he, this axin will be produced or secreted in more if more enzymes are produced now this ca among capital t and small t capital t is more active since this is more active than this one this capital t it makes the uh, it gives the information to produce more enzymes uh, that means more the production it pr produces more enzyme as it produces more enzymes this enzyme will produces more and more axin one thing you keep it in mind so we have taken a plant having a allele having a set of allele called capital t and small t so if this is if capital t is present this is the dominant character therefore the plant grows as a tall plant why if capital t is there why the plant will grow as a tall plant because this capital t is very active since is it is very active it helps or it uh, it it give the information to produce more and more enzyme why we need enzyme enzymes are nothing but proteins why we need this enzyme enzymes are responsible for the production of axin if enzymes are responsible for the production of axin who is responsible to give the information for the production of enzyme that is the dominant character since capital t is more active it gives the information for the production of enzyme and this enzyme will helps in the production of axin if more enzymes are produced it produce more and more axin if more and more axin is produced then the tall the plant will grow as a tall plant so therefore now we can give the conclusion that always the tom dominant character will be expressed so therefore among these two capital t is more act more dominant and hence the dominant character will be expressed so once again i will explain so let us take so how do traits get expressed so trait how it get expressed means so that is if the two alleles are there capital t capital t the plant grows as a tall plant if one is capital another one is tall uh, another one is small t again the plant grows as a tall plant if both the alleles are small t then the plant grows as a dwarf plant now let us take a plant and that plant having a set of chromosome capital t and small t so among these capital t and small t capital t is more active now we know that let us recall this one so in control and coordination we have studied about axin axin is an hormone responsible for the growth of a plant our axin helps in the elongation of cell and also it helps the stem to bend towards sunlight now uh, who is responsible for the production of axin enzymes are responsible for the production of axin what is an enzyme and enzymes are proteins now since among capital t and small t capital t is more active and this active capital t 
will give the information to produce uh, will give the information for the production of enzyme as more and more enzymes are produced these enzymes will produces more and more axin enzymes are of enzymes are, enzymes are what enzymes are proteins and as more and more enzymes are produced more and more axins are produced since axin axin is secreted in more than the plant grows as a tall plant therefore among capital t and small t capital t is dominant therefore the plant will grows as a tall plant so now you observe so in small t and small t if a plant having a uh, set of chromosomes small t and small t so both the small t are inactive they are not as active as capital t since they are they are uh, inactive they cannot produce more and more enzymes since they cannot produce more and more enzymes they cannot produce more and more axin since they cannot produce more and more axin so the plant will grows as a dwarf plant that means the plant never grows as a tall plant it grows as a dwarf plant so like this you have to explain how the traits get expressed now let us go for another topic that is called sex determination so next topic is called sex determination so let us study about the sex determination so in sex determination so let us know so uh, that is in sex determination in human so let us take uh, who is responsible for the reproduction one male one female so now let us take the father and a mother so now the father each cell of a father have 46 chromosomes and each cell of a mother will have 46 chromosomes that is 23 pair the first pair the 22nd pair 22nd pair and this is the 23rd pair in in as like father in mother also there are 23 pairs this is the first pair this is the 22nd pair remaining everything i can't write therefore i will go for from 1 to 23 so in father each and every cell of a father except gamete will contain 23 pairs of chromosomes and in each and every cell of a mother except uh, that is gamete so she also contain 23 pairs of chromosomes so during gamete formation so among uh, 23 pairs the first 22 pairs are called autosomes and the last pair are called sex chromosomes or the last pair is called gametes or the last pair is called as uh, what germ cells so these autosomes will decide all the other char character except the sex of the child for example it may be skin color it may be ear color it may be high color it may be shape of the nose it may be ear lobe anything it may be all the other character except sex of the child will be decided by first 22 pairs of chromosomes which we call it as autosomes and now in mother also the first 22 pairs are called as auto autosomes and the 23rd pair is called as sex chromosome and that 23rd pair will decide what will be the sex of the child and 1 to 22 autosomes they will decide what will be the skin color what will be the hair color what will be the eye color what will be the other characters it will be decided by that is called autosomes now during gamete formation that is in father during reproduction sperms are produced in mother during reproduction eggs are produced and these sperms are called male gametes and these eggs are called female gametes and now during gamete formation from the father from the first set one chromosome 
and from the second set one chromosome then from the 23rd set one chromosome now you observe all the cells are diploid in nature except gamete the gametes are haploid in nature these are diploid because they contain 2n number of chromosomes and all the gametes are haploid because they contain n number of chromosomes see here observe here from the father out of 23 pair from the first pair out of these two one chromosome out of these two 22nd one chromosome out of these two from uh, that is one chromosome now you observe from the father the 23rd pair either it contains one will be x another one will be y chromosome in father in 23rd pair out of uh, in 23rd pair in one one uh, that is uh, one chromosome will be x chromosome another chromosome will be y chromosomes so that is from the father first from the first pair one chromosomes during gamete formation half of the number of chromosomes will be present in the gametes from the first pair one second pair one third pair one like that from the 23rd pair one from the father either the 23rd pair uh, 23rd chromosome it in the gamete in the father either the 23rd pair will be x chromosome or the 23rd pair uh, 23rd chromosome will be y chromosome from the father out of 20 uh, that is from the 23rd pair for either x will be there or one uh, y will be there because uh, these are haploid in nature means the gamete consists of only uh, single chromosomes so in uh, that is deep haploid haploid means from the 23rd either x will be there or y will be there in the gamete so gamete 20 23 uh, 23rd chromosome may be x or y like that in mother also during gamete formation from the first set one chromosome then from the second set one chromosome from the 22nd set one chromosome and from the 23rd pair uh, one chromosome in mother the 23rd pair will be always xx only these are homozygous and these two are heterozygous because they contain same alleles since they contain same alleles they are called homosomes sorry homozygous since they contain different alleles they are called heterozygous so uh, in uh, mother the 23rd chromosome will be x only always the 23rd chromosome in mother it is always x only now these male gamete these female gamete they fuse together when male gamete and female gamete fuse together so fertilization takes place during fertilization the zygote is formed during fertilization zygote is formed see here in the zygote one chromo from the first one one chromosome from uh, father one chromosome from mother then it will become the first will become the first pair then from the uh, second chromosome will combine with the father second chromosome will combine with second chromosome of mother then third chromosome of father will combine with third chromosome of mother like that only the 23rd chromosome of father will combine with 23rd chromosome of mother so now we know that 23rd pair of father that is 23rd pair of father so uh, from the father 23rd if it is x then from mother always it is x only this is the 23rd pair so 23rd during gamete formation sorry during the fusion of male gamete and female gamete so from the father the 23rd pair if it is x chromosome from 23rd is x chromosome and from mother the 23rd is x chromosome then then 23rd will become xx if both the chromosomes are same if it contains same allele then the child will grow as a the baby will be girl baby or if the 23rd pair of sorry 23rd chromosome of father is y and 23rd chromosome of mother is always x 
if both the alleles are different then xy will be there then different that is heterozygous condition then the baby the boy the baby will be always boy only that means during sex determination during uh, the fusion of gamete the, during the fusion of male gamete and female gamete that is during fertilization if 23rd chromosome of father is x then mother is always x only xx combined to and the child will be girl it will be girl baby and if the 23rd chromosome of father is y and 23rd is uh, 23rd chromosome of uh, 23rd chromosome of mother is x then the child will be boy child that means uh, during sex determination or during uh, fusion of gamete there will be 50 50 chances of getting a boy baby or a girl baby and always you keep it in mind the gender of the child always depend upon the chromosome of father not the chromosome of mother because the mother chromosome the 23rd pair is always xx only but in father the 23rd pair will be xy so it is heterozygous so therefore if during gamete formation from the father from the 23rd pair if 20 th 23rd pair if x come during fusion of male and female gamete the father x chromosome combined with mother x chromosome and the baby will be girl baby during gamete formation in the sex cell if that from the 23rd pair of the father chromosome if y chromosomes will be there in the gamete during fusion of gamete the 23rd chromosome of father y combines with 23rd chromosome of mother x therefore xy will combine to give a baby that is boy baby therefore that is during fusion of the gamete there is 50 50 percent chances of getting either a boy baby or a girl baby therefore the gender of the child will be will be 100 percent depends upon uh, that is chromosomes of father that is gene of the uh, uh, father or it is the uh, that is what chromosome of the father because the mother will have the same chromosome but father will have xy chromosome father x combined with mother x girl child father y combines with mother x then the child will be boy child therefore the gender of the child depends upon the chromosome of the father not the chromosome of the mother this you keep it which chromosome 23rd pair chromosome father will have always 23rd pair will be xy mother's 23rd will be xx father x will combines with mother x girl father y combines with mother x the child will be boy like this we have to decide that is 50 50 percent chances will be there either it may be boy or it may be girl therefore the gender of the child totally depends upon the chromosome who is responsible for either a boy baby or girl baby father is responsible because father chromosomes what what the chromosomes that will fuse with mother chromosome depends on whether the boy uh, whether the child is boy or the child is girl therefore it depends upon the chromosome of father not the chromosome of mother because mother always have the same chromosomes so like this in this video we have studied about so how the traits get expressed and also how the sex determination in humans so this you have to so before completing this one once again i will explain these things how the traits get express, expressed suppose uh, if the plant having a capital t capital t so then the plant growth grow it, it grows as a tall plant that is uh, capital t these two alleles are there then the plant will grow as a tall plant if these two allele, allele alleles are there then the plant grows as a tall plant if these two alleles are there then it grows as a dwarf plant so here uh, who is responsible for the growth of the plant the uh, hormone called axin 
So axine helps in elongation of cell and also helps the stem to bend towards the sunlight. Now this axine, who is responsible for the production of axine? That is, that is enzymes are responsible for the production of axine hormone. Now what happens? So now you think that I have taken a plant and that plant having a set of chromosome capital T small t. Then how the plant will grow as a tall plant? By looking these alleles we can say that the plant will grow definitely it grows as a tall plant. Then how can we know that this plant will grow as a tall plant? Among capital T and small t, capital T is more active. Since it is more active, it gives the information to produce, it, it gives the information for the production of enzyme. As more and more enzymes are produced, enzymes are nothing but proteins. As more and more enzymes are produced, more and more, act, this more and more uh, production of enzyme makes to produce more and more axine. Since more and more axine is produced, more axine, the plant grows as a tall plant. Less axine, the plant grows as a dwarf plant. So if the plant having a set of chromosome small t and small t, so both the, both the t's are inactive. They are not as active like capital T. Therefore, since these two are not active as much as a small capital T, so less enzyme will be product. Uh, it gives less information for the production of enzyme. As enzyme is produced very less, it uh, it also produces less axin. As the axin is produced very less, the plant grows as a dwarf plant. Then sex determination of the child. So, in each and every cell of a father contains, except gamete, it contains 23 pair of chromosome. Each and every cell of a mother, except gamete, contains 23 pairs of chromosome. Among 22, sorry, among 23, the first 22 pairs are called as autosomes and those chromosomes are responsible for all the other character except sex of the child. Then uh, the um, in mother also the first to twenty second uh, twenty second chromosomes from one to twenty two chromosomes set of chromosomes they are called autosomes and they are responsible for the product uh, and they are responsible for all the other character except the sex of the child. Now during gamete formation half of the chromosomes will be in the gamete. So from the first set of chromosome in a father, one chromosome will be in the uh, will be in the gamete. From the second set, one one. And from the third set, one. From the twenty third set, one. So the twenty third pair of father chromosome will be X chromosome. It contains X chromosome and Y chromosome. Like that in mother. Uh, first 1 to 22 chromosomes are called autoto autosomes and these autosomes are responsible for all the other character except this sex of the child. So 23rd pair, pair of chromosomes in mother contain XX chromosomes. Now during gamete formation from the first pair 1, second pair 1 chromosome. From the 23rd pair both are same chromosome therefore 23rd chromosome in gamete will be X only. In, in father, the 23rd chromosome, either it may X or it may be Y. So when these two gametes are fused, then fertilization takes place, zygote is formed. So during the fusion of male and female gamete, if 23rd chromosome of father is X, it combines with 23rd chromosome of mother X. So if both are X, then the child grows as a girl child. See it? If both are, if both are, if both the chromosomes are X only, if both the chromosomes are X, you observe here, this is the 23rd chromosome from father, this is the 23rd chromosome from mother, both are same, therefore the child grows as a girl child. If 23rd chromosome of father is Y, and 23rd chromosome of mother is X, then the child grows as a boy child. That means there is a 50-50% chances of getting either a boy baby or a girl baby. 
and totally the gender of the child depends upon the that is fusion of father chromosomes xx from the father x the girl will, the boy the child will be girl from the father y the child will be boy so like this you can determine the sex of the child in human so thank you